and out. Oh boy. Uh, and out, you can relax, you can let him drop his head a little bit. You can tell him there's no need to be stressed about it. But every day we've got a little bit to be able to enter his space more. And every day he's got to learn to say, I will allow you to do it. You can't ride a Grand Prix test if you can't touch your horse. And that, at the end of the day, is the aim. So chain the rein. As you're riding now, you feel, can I just a little bit influence you more? Can I take more bend than you want to give? Can I, have in, can I be in the speed that I want to be, not the speed that you want to be? Yeah, well done. That's a very good exercise, actually. Even when things don't go wrong, to do half pass, halt, half pass. Very good exercise, even when things are going well. Another thing this horse needs to work on is the adjustability of his canter. So I've got an exercise here with the two canter poles that I'm going to use to adjust my strides. So it's currently strided at six strides and I'm going to ride that now first time round. I made that very comfortable and a nice forward rhythm. Kept really good balance and quite nice and forward into the contact. So now I'm going to shorten the canter and ride seven strides. Collect him up a little bit more. Oh boy, he listened to me on that last stride. We've now moved up from the lunge pen into the stable to move on to the next part of the process. I get on in the stable. I'm not saying it's everybody's option or it's the right way or the wrong way, but it's the way that I do it. Um, so you'll see me now. I'll start to get on him, maneuver beside him. Before this, I've already stood beside him, got him used to me being beside him and standing on the dustbin and just got him used to me being up there, felt over him and then moved on after a day of that probably once he's confident in it. That's the key is the confidence is then moving on to then leaning over him and feeling the pressure of me slightly on the saddle and a bit of manu movement of the saddle as well. Always uh, when I'm doing this I have the stirrups hanging down. I don't lunge with the stirrups down. Um, I don't see that as important but I do when I'm up, once I'm in this position to have them down so I'm ready to get on when, I, when, when that time is right. This time, again, really focusing on his straightness. I'm hoping a little bit, because we have the big crosses, that it, you know, they help to just straighten him up and realise you know, that he can't sort of dangle one leg one side more than the other. We've added in another element now, which is one canter stride distance away. We've put a cross pole again to help straighten us improve his technique and I've also put a placing pole down in between so he really sort of uses that to look down and make a nice shape over his jumps because he, he tends to just like to be a little bit head high so by using the poles on the ground I'm hoping he'll just start to look down at those and think about his technique. It's 18 feet now from the plank to the next cross pole so a good short one stride distance. There, rather felt that Des was having a look and he'd seen that final element be put in there and he was just having a bit of a gorp. He's got to keep looking and be able to jump. So with these grids, what I'd like to think is that if Des makes a mistake, you know, I'd like to think that he can come next time and improve on it himself. I don't feel like I want to, you know, have to bully him into any of this. It's got to be him working out where his feet go, a bit more spatial awareness. Got it this time. Good boy.